Good morning, Brookline High School. Um, welcome to Intercession Day 2022, a call to action. Uh, as many of you know, my name is Anthony Meyer. My pronouns are he, him, his, and it is a pleasure uh, to be here with these panelists and to be here with all of you. Um, before we begin our panel discussion, I just wanna talk a little bit about Intercession Day. What is it and what is it this year? Why are we doing this? Um, so intercession is something we've used uh, during um, my tenure at Brookline High School and before as a pause between semesters, a time to reflect together, to engage in community conversations, uh, and work together. In the past, we've talked about stress, we've talked about homework, uh, many other topics. Um, and we also wanted to make an explicit connection to our all school read last summer of Brian Stevenson's Just Mercy. Um, and more specifically, we wanted to highlight and encourage students and staff alike to take action to address political, institutional, and social injustices. We'd love to hear from each of you on each of these questions. And the first is, is the, the broadest. So what is the work that you do? So hi, everyone. As Mr. Meyer said, my name is Anna, and I'm a junior here at BHS. I founded two nonprofit organizations back in 2020 of my freshman year. And today, I'll be sharing about one of those nonprofits, Language Virtual which some of you might have heard through Canvas announcements. Our mission at Language Virtual is to connect our world through the English language. So we basically touch on social injustices when it comes to uh, learning the English language. So we recruit high school students to teach English uh, free of cost, whether one-on-one -on -one or in full-size group classes to students around the world. And I think right now we have around 700 members, and 30 of which are our fellow BHS students. And uh, I think also we serve more than several countries, including North Korean defectors, students in Thailand, and Afghan refugees. Yeah, so that's a little bit about language virtual. Awesome. Thank you so much, Anna, and thank you for the work that you're doing. Just amazing that you founded these organizations as a ninth grader, so 14 or 15 year old. So. Um, we're excited to hear more about your work and frankly, some of the obstacles here um, at the high school that you might have hit and in general, as you tried to launch these nonprofits. Ms. Lynn, how about you? Sort of the impact that you're making and that you wanna make. Sure, so let me just share a quick story about one of our students. We had a student come to the US and actually to Brookline last year from Japan and he couldn't speak any English. We then assigned him to one of our teachers, Sunny, who then worked with him uh, through that year uh, to improve his English. And I saw him last year at one of the fundraisers we did in front of Trader Joe's. And he came with his mom and at first I did not recognize him. Um, and he showed me that he's now able to communicate effectively in English. And he told me, and he and his mom both told me that they were grateful that we, to the effort of our teachers who helped teach him the language. And also they, she said that we helped their family integrate into the Brookline community by, by um, sharing that we're, we we're welcoming them essentially by, by teaching the language. And actually my mom had a very similar experience uh, when she immigrated to the US from Korea, but except without the language virtual English part. So she went to the Dana Hall School in high school and she told me there that lunchtime was always the hardest time for her because she wanted to sit somewhere and actually she did not have a choice. All the tables were already taken by people. And with her lack of English and her accent, that was very hard for her. She told me that they're in the cafeteria there is this really long salad bar overlooking all the tables in the cafeteria. And so she would go to the beginning of the salad bar and then go down the line, you know, getting the lettuce, tomatoes, cheese. And meanwhile, she would be looking out towards the cafeteria to see if 
she could ask anyone, if anyone looked friendly enough, that she can ask to sit with. And so, yeah, she would continue going and, and looking. Um, and if she got to the end of the salad bar and she couldn't find anyone that she could ask, she would go to the beginning and start over again. She would continue getting all the salad until she told me one time she ended up with 20 tomatoes on her plate and a mountain of lettuce because she had to go and again and again. And that shows how um, she unwel like how unwelcome uh, she felt um, with the lack of the language and also with no one to sit with. And so, she, and then after she got her salad, uh, she would go ask someone to sit to sit with her. And she would go up with her um, with her tray and her her mountain of lettuce and be like, "Hey, can I sit with you?" And no, she told me no one ever outright refused her. But when she sat down, she told me that people would like glance at her. Um, because she, of course, she was like a foreign student. I'm sure they were not just glancing at that, that, that pile of like salad, but like her herself. And she told me how unwelcome she felt in that community. And imagine if her experience would have been different. Imagine if she had someone to, to teach her the language and by doing that, making her feel welcomed in the community. That's what Language Virtual strives to do for our students who come from overseas into communities in America. And for me, being the first generation born in my family in the US, I know secondhand how difficult but important it is to learn English. And like it has to my parents, the knowledge of the English language gives one more opportunities. At this point, I feel like English is basically a doorway to knowledge, wealth, and technology. And by sharing our knowledge of the language with students around the world, we are ensuring equal opportunities for everyone to succeed and also allowing the future generation to participate in our growing world. And since English is a universal language in our world uh, for reasons I won't get into today, it can be used by anyone to communicate and build community. In our lessons, students and teachers, and by teachers, I mean high school students, not only develop a connection, but a friendship that will last them a lifetime. They go from strangers in two different countries to citizens of our world. And I feel like that sometimes when there's a problem in another country, we ignore it or don't take action. And I feel like that's because we don't feel a connection with those in need. Language virtual establishes that connection and even better, friendship. And members are more inclined to help those in need because of that connection. Our organization provides a meaningful way for high school students to get involved in making a change in our world through sharing the English language. And it does not take thousands of people to make that change. And it also doesn't take adults to uh, take responsibility. We may be just 700 students, but the change we're making impacts our world. Thank you. Anna Lynn, thank you so much. What a powerful story um, about your mom's experience at Dana Hall. I'm a sucker, I'm an English teacher by training and a sucker for a good story. And I both appreciate your story in terms of what it says about language virtual and the way that you build community and invite people in who might feel other, who might feel not a part uh, of that. Um, and I'm just, I think I'm mindful also that we have kids at students at Brookline High School, wonderful young people who also are wondering who they're going to eat with um, at lunch and where they're going to be invited into community. And so I both hear your story about language virtual and a larger story about the ways in which your work and all of our work can call people in and have people be uh, members of our community and feel a sense of belonging. So thank you, uh, thank you for that. 
everyone, this is probably going to be very brief um, compared to the other panelists. Um, and I think one of the challenges we face is definitely getting our high school students to be like immersed in the culture of their student. And I think just like Mr. Evans said, it's hard to get people to think outside the box. And for us in our in language virtual, I find it very hard to get our, our high school students to just be, I guess not, not necessarily open, but like as, um, aware of another student's culture. And like, for example, in our lessons, some teachers would do a lesson on food and then to our students in Thailand. And in, in, the, in the lesson, they would put pictures of, let's say macaroons. And for a student in Thailand who does not live in the city, I don't, like they don't um, necessarily know what that is. They cannot relate to it. And that's not, um, that's that that lesson wouldn't be effective without having them be able to relate to it. So, and I would tell the the, the high school student like, hey, try to. Um, it would be best if you could do some research or get to know your students more um, for that. But um, I still, it's very hard to get them to do that. So I would say that's definitely a challenge, like getting them like immersed in a different culture. Um, and I guess another challenge is an internal one that I face. So oftentimes people would tell me that we just teach English and, and that's, and then they would tell me that, Hey, I don't want to help your organization because you just teach English. And that, that presented a very big internal struggle for me. So from there then on, I was thinking, what do we do? How do we help the world? And and then now I'm here today in the, in the panel and it's made me think about so much stuff that we do. And so, I, yeah, and it's made, it made me think the opportunities and the chances we're giving to students. So yeah, I think that's, those are definitely um, two challenges that me and other high school students face in language virtual. Before I answer about challenges, I just want to um, say to Anna, there's nothing minuscule about, I hate when people use the word just, um, it's kind of like in, in my community, people use the word little, like, oh, you're little, whatever to, to mean things and to demean things. And sometimes people do that with the word, like you're just teaching English. You're not just teaching English. You're, you're teaching um, community. You're teaching humanity. You're teaching to lift as one climbs. You're teaching a uh, communication, which, which ultimately builds people in confidence. And it, there's so much you're doing um, that is literally the basis for excelling in life. Um, so I, I never want you to, um, to wake up in the morning and think, oh, we're just teaching this one thing, because what you're doing contains so many multitudes. And um, I think I can speak for, I don't like to speak for everybody, but I think I can speak for everybody when I say we are all proud of you and just inspired by you and the work that all of the students are doing to teach um, the language and in doing that, um, empowering one another to show the changes you can make in the community that you're cultivating, which is literally allowing people to move more confidently and freely in their own personhood. First of all, I would like to say thank you so much for inviting me on this panel and allowing me to speak with these wonderful people. And also, I would like to say thank you so much to all our students, and especially students worldwide, high school students, my friends, and my family. Thank you so much for your never ending support and dedication to our mission, because we cannot be here without you guys today. And I would like everyone to remember, it does not take thousands of people making a difference. And, and if you don't know how, how would you like to make a difference in the community, go with what you're passionate about first, because that's always, you will always do the best work with something you're passionate about. And I think with that being said, um, if anyone would like to sign up for Language Virtual, 
uh, I'll put the link into the chat right now. And I'll also, um, sorry, let me just put it for everyone. And also, um, if you want it, the link's also above my head. Um, and we'll also be at this afternoon's club fair. So make sure to look for us there. And if you happen to have any questions, please uh, reach out to me like on email. I think if you search up Anna Lin on your Brookline K-12 inbox, it should show up. Or uh, feel free to approach me in the hallway and ask your question. Please join us to make our world a better place. And on top of that, get community service hours. And thank, and again, thank you so much, everyone, for listening and inviting and giving me an, this opportunity uh, to be a part of this pa panel. Anna, just thank you. Uh, you know, it's kind of you to express gratitude for us. I think that um, for you to join us and speak so powerfully about the work that you're doing is is an inspiration to me, and I know it's an inspiration to your classmates, and certainly we heard and saw um, to your fellow panelists. So um, I just, again, I wanna say thank you for being a part of this conversation. Thank you for the wonderful connections you all made across the work that you're doing uh, and the messages you provided to Brookline High School students and staff about um, our focus today, which is a call to action. Um, so um, I'll send more in more formal thank yous, uh, but I just, uh, again, I'm indebted to you all and humbled by the work that you're doing um, and all that you had to say um, to one another, to me, and most of all, to all the students and staff members uh, watching and listening.